Well, the next item is that aforementioned blended learning update. Dr. Pilch. Thank you. Well, it is certainly my honor to have uh, the folks come forward and, and share with you the blended learning report and update. This has been significant work here in District 6, as I understand it. And as a Board of Education, you made a tremendous commitment to ensuring that our students and our staff would have what was necessary to begin to implement blended learning in District 6. I want to just give a little overview um, before I turn it over to Dr. Dattery that just for our, our public, should anyone be watching, but blended learning is really that combination of brick and mortar learning that can occur in a traditional classroom and the online learning that can occur really anywhere in a traditional classroom or outside of the traditional classroom. But it's the blending of the two, and that's why we've called it blended learning. But it really is a, um, a significant strategy to, to really beginning to personalize learning for each and every student. So I'm very excited to get to be a part of it here in District 6, and I'm happy to introduce to you Dr. Dattery and Mr. Andrews again, who will give you the update tonight. Thank you, good evening, President DeWitt, Superintendent Pilch, and members of the Board of Education. It is with pleasure tonight that Dagan Andrews, our uh, Director of Instructional Technology, and I are able to share with you a blended learning update. This has been a journey that we've been taking together for a few years, and it really feels like things are up and rolling and going very well as um, we've really taken on uh, this new journey together. In this report, we will share with you um, a reminder of why we actually even started this journey of innovation, and it is to create exactly what you just mentioned, Dr. Pilch, around personalized models of learning for all of our students. We are also going to share what we have found in our schools that exemplify that high quality implementation around four principles that guide the development of our blended models that we're implementing, as well as the schools that have diligently worked to develop these models uh, in their classrooms for their students. And finally, we are going to share with you how our implementation of blended learning is being supported across the system and the next steps that we believe we need to take in order to further this journey for our students. So we believe that personalized learning changes, truly changes the lives of our students. The combining high quality instruction in a way that is personalized for each of our students in our classrooms, providing what they need when they need it, can make a significant impact on student achievement and the learning of each and every child that sits in a classroom. We believe that by personalizing the learning experience through the use of blended models, we can really think about repositioning our teachers so that they can engage at the highest value of exchanges and interactions with their students helping them to connect ideas, think critically about the, and, and analyze the information that is in front of them and with them, that they can really examine what it means to innovate with their peers and to create those authentic demonstrations of learning that we've all craved for in our own learning environments so that our students can learn more, faster, and with more depth than maybe we even thought they could before. I remember thinking as a teacher, how could I personalize the learning as one teacher for all of my 25 to 27 on any given year, little first grade, six, seven year old children. And I can still remember the names of the kids that I had the opportunity. And for whatever reason, there was this group of kids and it was probably because there really were 27 of them, one of which had to oftentimes either sit right next to me or on my lap during story time or whatever it may be because he was all over the place. And then I had children like Nico and Sabrina who um, were very bright, but there were just certain things I couldn't unlock for them and I wasn't sure how. And kids like Jacob and Jessica, and I think there were a lot of Jays this year because I also had a Jaden, but I also had an Ashley that um, they were pretty middle of the road kids and I loved because I always kind of used them as my barometer. Was I doing what I needed to do? Well, yes, they're learning, life is good. Uh, Sabrina and Nico was always a bit more of a challenge. And then there was Clinton, who was a challenge on the other end because he pretty much knew everything that I was going to say and he was telling me what I needed to say and he was keeping me on my toes and some days more than I would have liked to have admitted. Um, I probably wasn't really meeting his needs because he knew a lot of what I was trying to teach him. He already knew how to read when he walked in the door and, and he was trying to tell me how I needed to teach math to my 
first grade students. And, and so I had all of these children. And I think about the things that are on this particular slide about what we're trying to achieve with um, our teachers in order to create these kind of environments and I wish I could go back to that same classroom and be able to have what we know now and implement that with with our students I tried in so many ways without the use of that digital technology without the use of being able to see what they really know in a in a quicker feedback loop and so it's really those stories that drive us as a team that we talk about on a daily basis and that I um, am so grateful that we can bring into our midst and that we've um, supported as a, as a team from the board to the classroom um, to be able to support all of our students. So it's with pleasure that we watch this and that we engage in these conversations. And Dagan is going to share with you the schools that have taken this on and the models that they're implementing for this school year. Thank you, Dr. Dadry. Last year, we shared with you our three schools piloting blended learning. This year, Bella Romero K-8 Academy of Applied Technology, Centennial Elementary School, and Jefferson High School have all expanded their pilots and are implementing at a deeper level, adding additional grade levels, content, and new teachers to blended learning. Launching into year three of our five-year implementation plan, eight more schools went through a site readiness assessment assessment to determine the school's capacity to implement blended learning. The eight additional schools added to our implementation include two K-5 schools, Meeker Elementary and Hyman Elementary. We've also added two additional K-8 schools with Chapelo and Winograd. We also introduced all four of our middle schools, Franklin, Heath, and Brentwood, and Prairie Heights are all implementing this year. In addition to these schools implementing on a larger scale, we also have individual students and small groups of teachers who are banding together and working together in those schools that don't have as much district resources to support to move forward with blended and personalized learning on their own or within those small groups. While each of these implementations vary from classroom to classroom and school to school, we have found four key elements that are critical to successful implementations. These elements are supported by research as having a powerful impact on student learning and traditional classroom environments. When face-to-face -face instruction is used in combination with digital content, content, this creates a powerful synergy, enhancing teachers' ability to leverage these key elements of instruction. The four key elements that exemplify high-quality blended learning implementations include the following. So the first one I'd like to talk about is tight feedback loops. And it was really John Cooney at Bella Romero K-8 Academy that really talked about this and this powerful interaction when students are working on digital content and everything they do, they're getting feedback from the content immediately. And that also is provided to the teachers in terms of their data dashboards. So both the student is finding out exactly where they are, what they understand, and the teacher is getting that on the other side to think about what would be the next thing they need to do in terms of instruction. The next piece is around quality student-to-student -student interaction. It's so important for our students to be able to collaborate with peers to learn more deeply the content they're learning, but this also helps support their vocabulary development and language in general. And so that can pre create a very powerful opportunity for students to deepen their learning. Another incredible driver is student ownership. When students have an opportunity to know where they are in their learning progression and be able to take some level of control over their pace their place, their path, and the time that they do their learning, they start becoming the drivers and start pushing their own learning and opening up new learning opportunities for themselves. We also know that targeted small group instruction, when students get what they need when they need it, either on an individual or small group basis, is incredibly powerful for students. And when you look at the blended models that we're implementing, there are always components that provide teachers opportunities within the structure to be able to really target their instruction to meet the needs of every single student. With these four elements in mind, each implementing school team composed of building leadership and teachers collaboratively develop blended instructional models. The models I will share with you are simplified versions of what these implementations look like. The first model that you see on the screen is one where half of the class is working on digital content while the other half of the class is working with the teacher. Now that could be in a direct instruction kind of model or that could be using collaborative groups as well. So you just see it's a pretty simplified model where we have just those two rotations. 
The second model has about a third of the class working with the teacher, receiving direct instruction, another third working in collaborative groups, while the last group is working on digital content. And so this provides a pretty neat opportunity for students to really interact and get all three of those different opportunities within each class period. The last model is what we call a flexible group model, where this is really pushing the limits of personalized learning. These are very complex models where teachers are really leveraging multiple groups and multiple learning opportunities to better meet the needs of all the students in their class. And so you can see this continuum. All of these are better positioning teachers to make a huge difference on student achievement. And some are more complicated than others, but all have those critical components that we've been talking about. But before developing these designs, the leadership teams needed to identify challenges that they, that they wanted their blended models to address. A couple of these challenges that school identified were making sure that all students have access to grade level content or above, or to really meet their needs at wherever their reading level is. We also had a school that found it incredibly important they were really struggling to meet the needs of the different levels of math learners in their classroom, and so they really wanted to be able to better differentiate their instruction. In order to support implementation, we have used a number of different strategies to provide enough devices to our schools. It's really pretty phenomenal. When you look at our different schools, we have had a school that has leveraged computers from the Social Security Administration to the University of Colorado. Uh, we had PTOs raising funds to be able to provide devices. We had the Success Foundation provide $9,000 to all of our middle schools and K-8s. That combined with the lease of 1,700 devices from our district funds has been what you see on our screen that's provided us the capacity to put this many devices in the hands of our teachers in a very thoughtful way so that they can really impact the learning of students. Schools are also using a combination of free and purchased digital content to support their blended models. Digital content was selected by school teams to target the specific challenges and learning needs of their classrooms and schools. In order to help teachers implement this combination of digital content as well as using those devices within their classrooms, we knew that we were going to have to find a way to provide them additional support if they were going to take the risk for the sake of learning of their students. So this year, it's pretty interesting because District 6 actually has fewer coaches, uh, but by reconfiguring our coaching support, we were able to add two blended learning coaches, which we were able to recognize tonight. Tammy Hermance, our K-8 and elementary coach, has been implementing blended learning for the past year and a half in her classroom at Hyman Elementary School in fourth grade mathematics. Her level of experience with blended learning is rare and will provide teachers with an incredible resource as they begin their blended journey. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he is our middle school blended learning coach. He taught technology classes at what was formerly known as Jay Evans Middle School. <laughs> and was instrumental in supporting his colleagues who were interested in setting up blended classrooms. So he already has served, just like Tammy, as an incredible support system for teachers in their school. Over and over, we heard from teachers that if they were going to take on the challenges of transforming their classrooms to blended models, they would need people <coughs> by their side through the implementation process. While this is a small team, I have already heard the value of having their support and expertise in each of these buildings they're supporting. In addition to coaching support, we are also providing opportunities for teachers and administrators to engage in what we call communities of practice, where they are provided time to celebrate their successes and problem solve around the challenges they are experiencing. These communities are designed to be practitioner driven and for them to have time to deeply explore and share expertise that they have gained through experience. To support our principals' understanding so that they can provide leadership in their buildings, we have partnered with the Friday Institute at the Graduate School of Innovation at the University of North Carolina State. We believe this is critical as they support their teachers move toward personalized models of instruction. As we continue down this path, we will continue to work with the Learning Accelerator in order to measure the effectiveness of blended learning for our students. To kind of paint the picture, I'd like to take a little bit of a step back. Um, and hopefully this will help illustrate blended learning and the power and potential that it poses for our students. So my eldest son is a competitive golfer. Uh, those who know me know that well. 
and as a competitive golfer he works really hard in his golf swing he works with this coach and one of the things for all competitive golfers is there are certain bad habits they have that they always kind of fall back into and my son happens to pull the club inside which causes the ball to go in all kinds of crazy places so he works with this coach and if you ever want to see me i'm at boomerang sitting in a chair behind my son as he hits range balls. <coughs> and usually all dad is saying is either that was perfect that was straight or son you pulled it a little bit inside now believe it or not that gets irritating to him over yeah. time. Can you imagine that? Uh, dad gets a little irritated. And believe it or not, when I say you pull it inside, sometimes he says, no, I didn't. <laughs> and so it was really interesting because as a competitive golfer, of course, when the snow starts flying, we don't have access to the driving range. And so we go to a golf simulator. And it's pretty neat. It's a great place to go. It gives him his swing speed. It actually shows a line. It shows the path of the ball. It shows the spin on the ball and it also shows the path of his swing. And so what's interesting is what started off as a substitute when the weather was bad, we actually go on beautiful days so that he can go to the golf simulator and dad walks away while the computer gives him all the feedback he needs. It tells him whether it was inside, whether it was straight, whether it was outside, whatever it is, and he gets so much data and analytics around it, he just loves it. Every single swing he gets that, and for some reason he doesn't get irritated at the computer when it says he pulled it inside, right? So the thing about it that's even uh, beyond my wildest dreams with this is when he's done, I simply click a button on the screen and I send an email to his swing coach who then reviews all of his data he can see everything he did, literally every swing, his swing path, the speed of the club. And so before they start the next practice session or instructional section, his coach already knows what he needs and has his practice plan ready for him. So what I'd like people to understand is by implementing blended learning, the digital content we're providing is doing the same thing in academic subjects for our students in their classroom that my son is getting on the golf course. I thank you for this opportunity to share our uh, successes and challenges with blended learning. This concludes our report. Well, thank you very much. Are there comments or questions from board members? Uh, this has been a significant <laughs> investment, as you said, but it's an, an investment of our hearts and our minds. And seeing, um, seeing what uh, appears to be some real positive feedback from the community that is involved in this has been a real pleasure.